Just because we've got three weeks left until Age of Ultron does not necessarily mean we are deprived from anything Marvel related. I now present to you evidence of that fact. Daredevil. Right, so Daredevil is a show that's on Netflix right now, and it is basically a show about Daredevil. This show is more or less a reboot of Daredevil, since as we all know, back in 2003, we had the Daredevil movie that starred Ben Affleck. And of course, may, a lot of people dis despise Daredevil. I'm actually one of the people who didn't think it was that bad. There are things about it that I actually do like. Like, I thought Ben Affleck was a good Matt Murdock, but... Uh, Eh, Daredevil. Colin Farrell was an awesome bullseye. I love the soundtrack. I think the soundtrack is incredible. So there, it's not necessarily an awful movie. It's just one of those movies that I feel like I don't hate it, but at the same time, I don't like it either. I feel like, to me, it's it's like my buddy, you know, my it's like my buddy Will, William Nunn. He, it's like my buddy William Nunn, how he, uh, he feels that way about Superman Returns, even though I despise Superman Returns. But I kind of feel like Daredevil is my Superman Returns. But yeah, I'm all, I'm all for a reboot, and especially when uh, Marvel made a deal with Netflix, I think it was like two years ago, about doing these Netflix shows about their more adult characters. One of them is are, are, one of them is obviously Daredevil, and the rest of them that we're going to see later on are Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and... Um, and that, and the, and that's it. And they will all culminate together in the, in the Defenders. And Daredevil is the first of that of that culmination. Anyway, so Daredevil's all about this dude named Matt Murdock. When he was a kid, he got blinded by all these chem all these chemicals, and they bl and uh, as a result of that, it made him uh, it made him made it it made his senses a lot more a lot more better a lot more better. Like he's like he can he can hear you know things from a block away. He's got like this he's got crazy martial arts skills. He's uh you know he's you know he. He's a, he be, he's a superhero, basically. And thus, he dresses as Daredevil, and he is on a mission to save his city, Hell's Kitchen, from being destroyed by all these pieces of shit criminals. Because, as they explain in the show, Hell's Kitchen has become the the neighborhood of, of all criminal activity after the events of the Avengers. And meanwhile, the Kingpin is out there, and he's causing problems, because he's like, no, there's no hope for Hell's Kitchen. We've got to destroy it. We've got to burn it all to the ground. And that's our show, basically, you know? I was really looking forward to Daredevil like crazy. I'm a fan of the Daredevil comic books growing up, and I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the thing is, the Marvel shows are fine, but they are not awesome. They are not on the same level as DC shows like Arrow and Flash, and even Constantine, for that matter. The, the Marvel shows are unfortunately average. I mean, Agent Carter, I think, is a step up from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. got better towards the end of the first season, and it's getting, and it's doing decent in season two but i didn't really feel like yes this is what i'm talking about you know what i mean but holy shit man daredevil is not just as good as arrow and the flash it could possibly be even better i fucking love the show man this show was awesome first of all i like the tone of the show this the tone of the show is gritty and dark and really really adult man like in like i understand why they didn't do Daredevil in the feature movies because you can't get away with that because unfortunately Disney Disney owns Marvel and they probably been like no you gotta PG-13 it you gotta water it down a little bit and I'm glad that they were like no let's do it on Netflix because on Netflix you can get away with a lot more Netflix is basically like HBO but not going to the ex the the, ex the lengths as HBO does at least that's at least that's why I think I haven't watched House of Cards or Orange is the New Black yet I will though really really soon. But holy shit, they go hard on this show. They go pretty far, man. Like, the the the, the violence in this show is just, it's awesome. It's, it's straight up bloody. And if this movie was a, if this show was a movie, it would definitely be rated R. Just do the violence alone. It is awesome. And it just felt, the whole show just feels real. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it does feel like it is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, you know, they reference Thor, they reference Captain America, they reference Iron Man at one point. It does feel like it is part of that universe, but at the same time, it does, it is darker and grittier. And that's one of my main criticisms about Age of the Shield, is that it didn't, doesn't really feel like it's part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, yeah, they, you got cameos from, from Nick Fury and Lady Sif and, and so forth, but I don't really feel like it is part of the same universe that has Thor and Iron Man and so forth. I mean, Agent Carter 
it does feel a lot more like the MCU than um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. does, but Daredevil does feel like it exists in the MCU. And that's awesome! Then we gotta talk about the cast. First of all, you have Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil. And the thing about Charlie Cox is I've seen him on episodes of Boardwalk Empire, and I've seen him in that movie Started Us, which is a Matthew Vaughn movie, which oddly enough it has Henry Cavill in it. It's weird. It's Superman and Daredevil. In either case, when I heard he was cast, I was like... He can, I, I can see, I was like, I can see him as, as Matt Murdock, the blind lawyer, but Daredevil, I don't know. Man, that all changed. He straight up kills it in both roles. He's really good as Matt Murdock. You know, he's got, he's a blind lawyer. He's really charming. You know, he gets, he gets the shakes or anything, everything like that. And yet he is a really good lawyer. But at the same time, he is Daredevil. When you see him on the street, when you see him ki kicking ass and taking names and intimidating criminals, you're like, holy shit, this guy's Daredevil. That's awesome. Like, Affleck, on the other hand, I feel like Affleck was good as Matt Murdock, the blind lawyer who charmed the chicks and everything like that. But I didn't really feel like he was a good Daredevil. I just kind of felt like, oh, it's Ben Affleck in a costume. And I just don't really feel like the script of that movie gave him much to work with as Daredevil. It gave him more to work with as Matt Murdock than Daredevil. But in this show, it gave Charlie Cox enough for him to work as Matt Murdock and Daredevil. He is Matt Murdock. And, you know, you see, you've seen him in the trailers and the posters. He's wearing the, the full-on black costume. And that's what's really cool about the show. This show is really an evolution of how he, of how Matt Murdock does become the hero of Hell's Kitchen. When you get to the moment when he puts the red suit on, you just felt, felt like you earned it. You know what I mean? It's, I, I, I was smiling the whole way through, man. The rest of the cast is good, too. You know, Deborah Ann Wool, I liked her as Karen Page. Rosario Dawson's in the show, and she's awesome. She's not in the show enough as I wanted her to be because she connects, her character connects to Luke Cage and uh, and the rest of the, uh, and the rest of the, what will be the Defenders, uh, the Defenders world. But I like, I liked her in the show. Um, you know, the dude, the dude who plays Foggy Nelson, I was like, uh, you're kind of, Force comedy right there. I thought he was hilarious in some scene. He does get some really great lines, but I was like, you're kind of forcing it down. Like, I like I kind of felt like this is the only time the Daredevil movie got better than the show, which was the Foggy Nelson character. I felt like John Favreau did it much, much better because the comedy is, comedy is just natural to John Favreau. Whereas this dude is Foggy Nelson, I was like, it just, it feels kind of forced to me. You know? But we haven't talked my, about my favorite part of the show. Vincent D'Onofrio as the kingpin. Okay. I'm a king. One of my favorite uh, just villains in general is the Kingpin. I love the Kingpin when he took down when he was taking on Spider Man. He was he ran he ran the whole city. He ran the whole city. He was he was a good fighter. He was as quick as Spider Man. Everything like that. No matter how many punches Spider Man could give to the Kingpin, it just wouldn't. It just he just wouldn't feel. He Spider Man literally had to dig deep just to land a punch on the Kingpin and have him fall down. You know what I mean? So when I saw Michael Clark Duncan as uh, the Kingpin, I was like, I like Michael Clark Duncan as an actor. He's a great act. He was a great actor, but he just wasn't the Kingpin. I didn't really get the sense of this is the guy that owns the city. This is the guy that owns the crime. That's different. Vincent D'Onofrio is the Kingpin. He owns the city. He is a straight up monster in in this show. He is so he is so evil. It's 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 scary. You know what I mean? And just, you know, the, the fact that he is on a mission to burn Hell's Kitchen to the ground and you really do feel like, holy shit, it better do something fast because this guy is unstoppable. You just really feel like if you really feel like if there's any de any definitive performance of the Kingpin in the past couple of decades from the from the live action versions of the Kingpin to the cartoon versions None of them will. None of them have stood. At, will, will stand um, taller. None of them will be better than Vincent D'Onofrio, who's the kingpin. The guy is without a doubt the kingpin, and I and I so badly since Marvel now has Spider Man again. I want to see him take on Spider Man. He would kill it. Third criticism I do have with the show, aside from um, you know Foggy Nelson, it's sometimes the show does get a little slow, especially with the stuff with Ben Urich and his. Uh, and his wife, like, I understand they're doing this for character development, but I was just like, oh, I want to get back to, you know, Matt Murdock taking on the criminals or Kingpin, you know, getting to, getting more into his evil plans and so forth. You know what I mean? I was just like, I was like, I just wanted to see just more of that. I just want to see less time with Ben Urich, you know, and, and his wife. But aside from that, Daredevil, Daredevil's a great show with a great guy who was, who was born to play Daredevil and a guy who was... Per so perfect as the Kingpin, I don't even think he was being filmed. It's dark, it's gritty, it's bloody as hell, and 
it's on it's currently on Netflix right now. You can just easily wa watch it. It will be the best 13 hours of your life. In fact, it didn't even feel like 13 hours to me. It just went by pretty fast. You know what I mean? Aside from the uh, the Ben Urich scenes that slowed the movie down, slowed the show down, it did feel like it it, it, it did feel like it went by pretty fast. But uh, overall. Yeah, it's my thoughts on Daredevil. I'm going to give Daredevil um, a 9 out of 10. I think it is, without a doubt, one of the best superhero shows I've ever watched. Probably one of my favorite shows I've ever watched, period, man. I will watch it again and again and again and again and again until the Blu-ray comes out where I can watch it again and again and again and just uh, and then just oh, watch, it, watch it for long. I want to see a season two. I want to see them. I know they have, they're talking about plans about bringing the hand in, which would be great, and Bullseye and Elektra, and I totally want to see the Marvel version of that, you know what I mean? But yes, this was the redemption of Daredevil, and it was done extremely well. So that's my take on Daredevil. I will give you guys my review of the first Iron Man and the rest of the MCU very shortly.